Hello, it's Shazza from Hooked on Books and welcome to uh, a Booktube catch-up video. So I haven't really been interacting very much or watching very much, so I've done a massive catch-up and in today's video I selected a few people and I thought I would respond to their videos just with a quick sort of reaction. So first up we've got one of my favourites which is Rene and we're going to see his uh, book haul. So take it away Rene. The next book I have to talk about is a book that everyone has been talking about um, and raving about and that is Lanny by Max Porter. He wrote a, um, Griff is a Thing with Feathers which I haven't read yet and I need to. I think I want to read before this one just to get a sense of who Max Porter is. So yes, everyone and their feckin' granny has been talking about this book and reading this book and I was excited about it off the back of having loved Grief as a Thing with Feathers um, so I have read that one which I've got just here um, and I, I absolutely love this and probably one of the best books I've read in recent years. Um, really sort of interesting take on grief um, told through sort of this, this family uh, and a crew but really sort of poetic in its language. It's almost a poetry book in itself, but it's telling a story. Um, and I love the kind of combination of that kind of beautiful poetic nature of the language alongside um, this sort of heartbreaking story that a lot of people can really relate to. Um, so I find this absolutely fantastic. However, I don't know why, I just don't seem to want to pick up Lanny. Um, and it's a book that for whatever reason I keep forgetting what it's actually about. Um, so it says, not far from London there is a village. The village belongs to people who live in it and those who lived in it hundreds of years ago. It belongs to England's mysterious past and its confronting, confounding present. It belongs to Mad Pete, the grizzled artist, to ancient Peggy gossiping at her gate to families dead for generations and to those who have only recently moved here. But it also belongs to dead Papa Toothwort who has woken from his slumber in the woods. Dead Papa Toothwort who is listening to them all. So yeah, that sounds very interesting. Um, I'm pretty sure dead Papa Toothwort, I don't know if he's an actual character or if he's an imagined character. I'm not too sure what's going to happen in this, but I'm really excited to read it. Um, apparently it's very focused on the boy called Lanny. Um, so yeah, super excited to get into it. I love this cover, it's really, really great. Um, and yeah, I'll let you know what I think of it when I've read it. First of all, thank you for reading the blurb because like you, um, even though I've heard so many people talking about this book, I haven't really retained information regarding what it's actually about. Um, but it sounds really cool. Um, I really like the sound of this sort of Papa Toothwort guy. That's really kind of intriguing to me. And it also sounds like it's just gonna be super atmospheric, um, which is kind of, what this one kind of felt like to me, but I feel like even more so in Lanny by the sounds of it. I mean, I don't know, I haven't read it yet, but it sounds that way to me. I'm not sure how I feel about the cover. Um, I'm intrigued by it in the sense of that I feel like when you read the book, perhaps there's going to be more meaning in terms of the cover. You know, it's quite plain, but there's something about it that that's it, there has to be a design reason for the cover to look the way it does. So I'm kind of interested to know what that is. Um, I do also think they're kind of just sticking with that sort of black and grey that they did for this one and kind of makes it instantly stand out as, oh, that looks familiar. Um, and it can kind of remind you of this one. Um, so yeah, cool, cool choice for today. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you think about it. It is called The Little Girl on the Ice Floe, a memoir by Adelaide Bonn. This tells the story of Adelaide Bonn as she was raped as a young girl. And um, it was investigated by the police, but then kind of a blanket was put over and it was forgotten except obviously from her. She grew up with it for her whole life until one day she gets a call from the police that they may have found the suspect um, and then a lot of other people come through and say that he is the suspect of their raping as well um, and the story involves from there. So I'm very, very excited to read this. It's going to be obviously heartbreaking, um, but a very important read and I'm very excited to read it. Um, yeah, it's being blurred by Leila Salmani, which is a pretty big author right now and um, yeah, just super, super excited about that one. So I have actually read this one. Um, so I got sent a copy of it actually several months ago. Um, I read it and I have to say that there's part of me that kind of fears books like this turning into that sort of misery memoir type thing. Um, and this book is not that at all. Um, it's translated from French. Um, so I read a lot of translated fiction. So I've kind of gained more of an interest in perhaps trying to seek out non-fiction as well that's translated. Um, so I read this and I thought it was fantastic. I felt like it didn't fall into that misery memoir category. It talked about things in a really honest way. Um, 
but it was, you know, I liked the kind of metaphors that kind of went throughout it. I liked the kind of poetic language. The beautiful writing combined with this sort of heartbreaking story, you know, I'd, I just felt like I wanted to champion this woman and just felt like such a sense of sort of solidarity with her and wanted to kind of be on her side and stand up for her and I was admiring her so much throughout it. Um, so I, I really loved it and I really, really loved it. Um, fantastically written, really heartbreaking story. One that definitely, you know, needed to be told and I think it's great whenever people can be honest about their experiences like this and, and publish it, you know, I think that's incredibly brave uh, and I admire, admire this author a lot. So I really hope you like that one too, Renee, because I thought it was great. Meanwhile, Sean the Book Maniac has been talking about his days in the gym. I used to be butch back when I was, you know, young. So I'm going to insert some video footage of me at the gym in my buffer butcher days. <sighs> So this is Sean doing the, the booktube at the gym tag, I think it was called. Um, I just recommend going to check it out because it's hilarious. Um, so I'm just going to kind of look at maybe some of the, his answers to certain questions and I'll kind of answer them too or respond to his answers. Leg day. Lots of people like to skip leg day. What book, genre, author have you skipped because you don't think you can handle it? Or what one do you wish you had skipped? So. This one is easy for me because I am a literary snob and I am not interested in genre fiction of any kind. There are some silly people that think literary fiction is a genre, but they're just f full of you-know-what. I'm just deeply uninterested in... I mean, I hate mystery, the mystery genre, horror, romance, YA. Uh, Middle-grade readers, middle-grade novels sometimes resonate with my middle grade brain but children's literature I hate so yeah I hate everything really except literary fiction uh, don't like essays don't like memoir and there are always one or two exceptions for some of these genres for some of them I can think of one thriller I read last year that surprised me by how much I liked it I think one of the John Green, the most famous John Green novel that was made into the movie about the two kids dying of cancer. That was so beautiful. But, you know, I, in the main, I'm a literary snob. So I skip anything like that as a general rule. So I love going to Sean's channel because I know that he is just super honest about everything book related. And I think it's fantastic and it can be really hilarious at times. Um, and likewise, I like his honesty here. Um, so I am similar in the sense that I can be a bit of his literary snob at times too, but I am also quite an eclectic reader. I read a lot of different genres and different books. Um, but in terms of fiction, I definitely have a preference towards literary fiction as opposed to just general fiction. Um, but I also like sci-fi, fantasy, a little bit of horror. Um, I like poetry, I like popular science, popular psychology, some politics books, some history books, some nature writing, some travel writing. I don't know, I'm kind of all over the show. Um, I'd say I also agree with Sean in terms of the middle grade. Um, middle grade, I can kind of engage and really get into middle grade a lot of the time just because there's an element that kind of feels nostalgic to me or it's kind of just... I don't know, there's something very comforting about reading those books. Um, so it's kind of like what Sean said, so if, if I can get access to my middle grade brain, then I, then I can really, really love it. I'd say for me, the main genre, it's not really a genre, um, is YA, I kind of skip YA, but I'm like not opposed to reading it entirely. I just find that when I look in a bookshop at that section, there's just nothing that really stands out to me. I kind of just see it as, Half of it is like fantasy and sci-fi and half of it is just like really depressing real life shite. And I sort of feel like if I want fantasy, I kind of find it easier to find that in adult fantasy. Um, and I don't know, I guess I don't necessarily feel like I want to read about people in high school and stuff. I don't know, there's bound to be something in there that I'm really into. I've definitely had some people recommend me stuff from that section that I feel like I could get on with, 
but I think for the most part I kind of avoid it because I didn't really like YA books whenever I was a young adult. Um, so I don't necessarily expect to now either. But I watch a lot of booktube channels that talk about YA books and I really enjoy that so I don't know, maybe I just need to open my mind a little bit more. <laughs> Number four, The Treadmill. It's all about endurance. What's a difficult or long book that you powered through? So I've already talked about Tale of Genji and Daniel Deronda. So a difficult book that I got through and I'm not, I don't really think it was worth my, worth the effort was uh, William Burroughs' Naked Lunch, which I read 20 years ago, maybe. I don't remember a blessed thing about it. I'm sure I didn't remember a damn thing about it the minute that I put it down. It was just stupid. But I did finish back in the days when I bought into this ridiculous idea that you had to finish what you start. So first of all, I admire that Sean just DNFs books so easily and I struggle with that so much. And I do wonder if there will ever come a time in which I will be able to, to do that properly because I struggle through books. And the point for me is, is that by the end of the book, I won't have even really read it properly anyway. If I'm not enjoying it, I'm probably just skim reading it just to say that I've finished it, which is stupid. So. Sean, I think you're great for DMF and books, and I wish I could do it a little bit more. Although I am gutted to hear that you didn't like this book, although I think a lot of people probably don't like it. But it's a book that I've got, and it just looks weird, and I've watched the film and it was weird. Um, I kind of like weird shit, so I feel like I might get on with it. I'm not sure, but um, it was interesting to see, to see your adverse reaction towards it anyway. Meanwhile, we've got Matt at MCS Books, who's making us all hungry. First one is Dancer from the Dance by Andrew Holleran. You might have heard me already talk about this book um, in my little complaining video where I was saying, oh, I just don't feel there's anything good coming out. Um, in the summer. This one is coming out this month in four days, so June 6th, um, and it is a queer cult classic of a straight to do man who um, wants to get involved in that sort of gay scene. Um, he really wants to explore his gay identity um, in Fire Island and all of these other places where um, the gay scene takes place, I guess. I wanted to read this one, but I've always also been a bit, mm, it doesn't really sing to me. Um, I have heard, however, some really good reviews about it. The issue being that the people I've heard reviewing it as something they've really enjoyed are the people who love the books that I tend to not love so much, or they struggle to get on board with the books that I love. So that kind of concerns me, but I don't know whether this one's going to be that moment where our tastes align. Um, so hopefully it could be, because it does happen, of course. Nobody hates all the books I love, and there's always crossover and overlapping and that opportunity to enjoy books. So this one could be that kind. Um, we shall wait and see. But still, I just love the cover. <laughs> I've got to give it to a man in speedos. Um, and Rupert Everett enjoyed this book enough to blurb it, apparently. Um, and I like Rupert Everett as an actor. So this is a book that I have also come across recently as well. And similarly to Matt, it didn't 100% sing to me. Um, I guess it kind of caught my attention in that I kind of, I don't read a huge amount of queer fiction and I feel like I should and kind of want to um, and this is one that came, you know, came to my attention so I was kind of interested in it for that reason and also queer culture is just something that I, you know, quite enjoy um, hearing about, learning about, seeing, you know, I think it's um, interesting so I think perhaps reading a book that's kind of, you know, looking at a gay man exploring gay culture could be interesting. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see what Matt thinks, because um, I feel like our tastes actually align quite a lot. Um, if, I, if I look, I'm going to look it up in my Goodreads to see what other people actually have said about it or if anyone I know has read it. So I've got a couple of people on here that who have marked it to read. Um, and there are people that I've got similar tastes to. And then also, ah, Sean. Sean's read this, who I was just talking about a second ago. He's given it five stars. Interesting. So I'm kind of looking forward to what Matt thinks about it, because I feel like we've got, like, quite a few similarities in our reading tastes, so I'm intrigued to see what he thinks. 
um, because it may or may not be something that I pick up in the near future. Anyway, that is all for today's video. I've actually really enjoyed having a massive binge watch of BookTube because I, I go through periods of time where I'm just not really able to engage with it as much. Um, and perhaps this is a video that I could do again in the future, reacting to a few other people. Um, let me know what you thought about this video. Um, let me know what you think about the books that other people were talking about and then I was talking about. Does that make any sense? I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna go now. Bye.